Arduino Lesson 1 The Blink LED Program Understanding the Hardware Setup and the Software Program Here are the different parts of the Arduino Development Board, identified and labeled. For the Blink LED Program, we will mostly be using the LED Pin 13 and the digital input-output pins. Let us now learn how to blink an LED using Arduino's digital output. If you are new to Arduino, this program is a great place to start. You can follow along virtually, then afterwards you may grab your Arduino Uno board and a USB cable, to create a physical circuit. You may download the Blink LED program from the link provided at the bottom. Here's what we need, the Arduino Uno board, an LED bulb, 220 ohm resistor, and the Blink LED program uploaded successfully. Connect the longer LED wire to the resistor, and this goes to pin 13. Then the shorter LED wire goes to the ground pin. When everything is connected properly, and the program was uploaded successfully, the LED bulb will blink every second continuously. You may try changing the LED to a different type or color, or use a resistor of higher resistance, but it will dim the light produced. Just make sure the connections are correct. And it will still give the desired result. Take note, the LED will lit up also with resistor values from 100 ohms, to 1000 ohms. Let's try changing the resistor, and see what happens. Here's how the LED lights up with 330 ohm resistor. When we use a 500 ohm resistor, the LED light is a lot dimmer. While for a 1 kilo ohm resistor, the LED light is very faint. Let's try inverting the resistor, and see what happens. Notice that the resistor still works, even if you invert it. This is possible since resistors are not polarized. What do you think will happen, if we place the resistor on the negative side of the of the LED? The program still functions properly. Again, inverting the position of the LED, won't affect the result. Take note, the resistor limits the voltage across the LED and the current that passes through it. If the you remove the resistor, the current through the LED will exceed its rating, and it will be destroyed. The LED might blink for a while, but eventually burns out. You may also use a breadboard. Take note of the connections. In the breadboard, the five holes in inside rows, are connected, and all holes in outside columns, are connected vertically. Due to separation in the middle, the rows on the right, are not connected to the rows on the left. This setup uses the breadboard, to easily connect the LED, resistor, and the Arduino board. As long as the connections are correct, we would get the desired output. Thus, make sure the positive LED wire connects to positive pin 13, while the negative LED wire goes to the ground. Again the resistor, can be placed on either the positive side, or the negative side. Now, let's understand the code for the Blink LED program. The code starts out with a gray comment block. These comments are just notes of information or guide, 
for us humans to read. Then we have the setup function, which is called when a sketch starts. It is used to initialize variables, pin modes, start using libraries, etc. Please note that the setup function will only run once, after each power up, or a reset of the Arduino board. Next, there is another gray comment block, which explains how we initialize. The initialization is always the first thing to do in a program. We used a built-in function called pin mode to do this. In here, we configure the specified pin to behave either as an input, or an output. In this case, we initialize LED underscore built-in pin as an output pin with this line. Take note, that this LED underscore built-in is connected by default, to the digital input output pin number 13, in the Arduino Uno board, and in most boards. After creating a setup function, which initializes, and sets the initial values, we can then call the loop function. It does precisely what its name suggests, and loops consecutively, allowing your program to change, and respond. Within the loop, we use the function digital write, to write a high, or low value to a digital pin. In this case, in the main loop, you turn the LED on with this line. This supplies 5 volts to the LED anode. That creates a voltage difference across the pins of the LED, and lights it up. Then we turn it off with this line. In here, we use the digital write function to write a low value to the digital pin. That takes the LED underscore built-in pin back to zero volts, and this turns the LED off. In between the on and the off, you want enough time for a person to see the change. So the delay command, tell the board to do nothing for 1000 milliseconds, or one second. When you use the delay command, nothing else happens for that amount of time. Here is the complete code used for the Blink LED program. When you are using a pin as an output, you can command it to be high, output 5 volts, or low, output 0 volts. All the extra symbols are part of Arduino's syntax, just don't get intimidated. It takes time to learn to write proper code from scratch. Let's break it down. Here are the syntax of the functions that must always be followed in Arduino programming. The setup and loop functions uses the open close parenthesis, and the opening and closing curly braces. Always remember, that every line of code ends with a semicolon. For comments, you may use two forward slashes for single comment lines or a slash with an asterisk for multiple comment lines. Here is another setup using the breadboard, with some connection changes. In here, we still use the pin 13 for the positive output voltage. But we used the ground pin from the power pins below for the negative voltage. This is another setup illustration of blinking LED program. In here, we now use the pin 2 for the positive output voltage. And we still use the ground pin for the negative voltage. Since, we are using the pin 2, instead of pin 13 for output, we also have to change the code. Just change the program to indicate pin 2. We have to do this to initialization setup routine, and on the digital write functions inside the loop routine. Take note, you can also use use any of the pins in the digital input output. From pin 13, until pin 2. 
just make sure that it is the PIN number used in the program code.